What's up smart homers, my name's Aaron, and in this video I wanna show you the Home Assistant Green, a smart home hub for beginners who value privacy and versatility in their smart home. If you're not familiar with Nabu Casa, they're a team of developers that work on the open source smart home platform Home Assistant. And recently they've gotten into selling some hardware. They started with the Home Assistant Blue back in 2021. And then a few years later, they released the Home Assistant Yellow with the Sky Connect Zigbee dongle. And now they've introduced the Home Assistant Green. If you've never used Home Assistant before, this new hub just might be your gateway drug into a whole new world of home automation, just like the Home Assistant Blue was for me a few years ago. One of the big impediments to using Home Assistant in the past was determining what hardware you wanted to use with it and then installing it yourself. The Home Assistant Green comes with Home Assistant operating system already installed on it. So out of the box, we get a nice sticker with the new Home Assistant logo on it, some instructions, you get the Home Assistant Green itself, a power supply with cable, and an ethernet cable. The first thing I noticed about the Home Assistant Green is the weight. It has a bit of a heft to it, and I think that's because of the large metal heat sink that forms the base of the device. The top part of the case is made from a translucent polycarbonate material, similar to the Home Assistant Yellow, and like the yellow, it allows you to see the color of the PCB inside, which gives the Home Assistant Green its name, I suppose. You can also see that that top has the new Home Assistant logo in it in like a dot pattern. The back edge of the device has a power jack, two USB 2.0 ports, an HDMI port for debug purposes, an SD card, a power button, and an ethernet port. The power jack takes 12 volts DC and the device requires about one amp for use. Of course, that power supply is provided. The USB ports are for external radios like Zigbee or Z-Wave radios or for whatever else you wanna add. The HDMI port is really for diagnostic purposes only, and the micro SD card slot is really only for device recovery. The power off button can be held for six seconds for a safe shutdown, or 12 seconds if you want a force shutdown. If you remove the four screws and pop the lid off the device, we can see some of the device's components. It has a spot for a battery, which I'm surprised is empty, but you can see that there is no Zigbee radio like there was with the yellow. In fact, the PCB is pretty sparse and it doesn't have any external radios. If you want to connect Zigbee or Z-Wave devices to Home Assistant using this device, you're going to need to add a Zigbee or Z-Wave radio USB dongle. The stick I usually recommend is the Nortex stick because it has both Zigbee and Z-Wave radios in one. On the PCB, you're also going to see these three white dots, which I think are just there to accentuate the Home Assistant logo as seen through that polycarbonate. There are some debug pins in the bottom corner that have TX, RX, and ground, but not much more on the front side of the device. The heat sink is stuck to the back of the board, but if we give it a little tug, we can remove it. On the back, you can see a little message from Nabu Kasa about the mission statement of Home Assistant, and you can see the processor, a Rockchip RK3566 with a quad-core A55 CPU. It has 32 gigabytes of eMMC storage, four gigabytes of memory and should run really cool with that heat sink on the bottom. Okay, so after this, I wanna show you how it compares to the Home Assistant Yellow, so you can get an idea of which one you should choose. But before that, I'll quickly show you how to set up Home Assistant. If you've already used Home Assistant before, it's fine to go ahead and skip to the next section. Getting started with this hub is as easy as plugging two cables in. First, connect the provided ethernet cable, or your own if you have one, to your router or ethernet switch. Then plug in the power supply to an electrical outlet and then to the green's power jack. Wait for a few minutes until the yellow light starts blinking in a heartbeat pattern and that'll tell you that you're ready to start setting up Home Assistant. The instructions say you can either use the mobile app or a web browser, but I prefer the web browser since it's a little easier to me, although using the app isn't very difficult. In a browser, you're just going to type in homeassistant.local colon 8123. That's gonna take you to the onboarding page of Home Assistant, and you're ready to begin. If typing that doesn't work, you can find the Home Assistant Green's IP address on your router, if you know how to do that, and then you're gonna type in that IP address, colon 8123, into the web browser. I also recommend that you reserve that IP address if you know how to do that. If you don't, Google it, there's plenty of videos on how to do it, so that it doesn't change in the future. 
On the onboarding page, click Create My Smart Home and then enter in your name, username, and password. You can add more users once everything's set up, but for now, click Create Account and then choose a location and click Next. I always turn on analytics because I feel like the more information the developers of Home Assistant have, the more they can improve it, which means better experience for me. Click Next when finished and you're going to see a bunch of compatible devices. Home Assistant has automatically scanned your Wi-Fi network and found a bunch of devices it'll work with. Click Finish and you're on your way. This is where I'm going to stop, but if you have any questions on how to set up a dashboard, which is probably one of the first things you're going to wonder, I encourage you to watch my Home Assistant Dashboards for Beginners series as I go over how to set up both PC, web browser, and mobile dashboards, and I think I explain it fairly well so you can understand what's going on. Now I want to explain how this device compares to the Home Assistant Yellow. The Home Assistant Yellow is based on the Raspberry Pi Compute Module 4, where the Home Assistant Green is based on the Rockchip A55. This means that with the yellow, you can swap out that CM4 for a different CM4. But the specs that I'm going to be referring to are the ones from that CM4 that they provided when I purchased the Home Assistant Yellow. The yellow has a quad-core Cortex-A72 at 1.5 GHz versus the greens at 1.8 GHz. It has 2 gig of memory, where the green has 4 gig of memory, and it has 16 gigabytes of EMMC storage, while the green has 32. So I think we should see better performance with the green, although the yellow can be upgraded, so you could probably improve the performance with that one. Either way, both of them easily perform well enough to handle Home Assistant, so you don't have to worry about processing power. Where the yellow really does stand out is the fact that it can be upgraded. For example, there is an M.2 expansion slot on the yellow, so you can add lots more storage if you want to. Also, the yellow has a Zigbee radio built in it, and there is a potential to add a CM4 that has a Bluetooth radio, meaning that you can connect Bluetooth devices to Home Assistant without having to add a Bluetooth dongle. On top of that, you can easily add Z-Wave to the Home Assistant yellow using those exposed GPIO pins by putting on a Z-Wave hat, like the one that Zoos sells. The other thing with the yellow is that there is a PoE version, power over ethernet, so you can power with an ethernet cable, meaning that you don't need to have two cables connected to it. So which one should you get, the green or the yellow? If you're new to Home Assistant and you're not really a tinkerer, it's a no-brainer to go with the Home Assistant green. It's only $99 and you can add Zigbee and Z-Wave dongles as you see fit if you decide to add those types of devices. However, if you really want to dive in and get the most out of one device, I'd go with the Home Assistant Yellow, as it has the Zigbee radio and you can add Z-Wave fairly easily as well as Bluetooth. So that's pretty much it for this device. I think it's really a great price point, that $99, for what you get, especially hardware that is going to be supported by the Home Assistant developers. Of the three that they've sold so far, the blue, yellow, and green, my favorite is still the Home Assistant Blue. It's got a place close to my heart, and I think it's one of the best looking devices I've ever seen. The blue didn't have Zigbee or Z-Wave radios built in, and I've still got hooked on Home Assistant, so you'll probably find the same with the green. If this is the first time you're seeing a video from me, definitely hit the subscribe button because I make a lot of Home Assistant related content as well as device reviews and WLED LED lighting videos. Anyway, thanks for watching. See ya.